Hey everyone, and welcome to my Baking Up a Holiday Recipe Sharing Power App series. The Floofs and I are thrilled you're here as we build a festive, start to finish power app, perfect for organizing and sharing your holiday dishes. Now, even though this app has a fun holiday theme, the tips, techniques, and features I'm gonna show you can be used to create any app for work, personal projects, or even other seasonal ideas. Here's a quick look at what we're going to cover throughout the entire series. We're going to leverage Canva for our graphics. This is not a paid promotion. We're going to leverage modern tabs for your end user's navigation. We're going to build responsive layouts with nested containers. We're going to use flyout containers and filters to make finding recipes a breeze. We're going to add interactive galleries with rollover effects and dynamic features. We're going to leverage random selections and icon changes on clicks. Plus, we're going to split strings, leverage flexible galleries, and tons of other tips and trips, tips and tricks to make all your apps functional as well as beautiful. Now, in today's video, we're kicking things off with the visual foundation of our app. I'm going to show you how to use Canva to create your background and your graphics for your app. We're going to use formulas, not the app on start, to manage all of your theme colors. We're going to add a gallery and leverage buttons for smooth rollover effects. And it'll make your categories, which you'll see in a sec, interactive and look really polished. By the end of this video, you'll have a home screen that sets the stage for the rest of the series. And remember, you can apply everything we're building here to any app you create. Now be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single step. Let's bake up something amazing and get started. We have extra company today. Not only do we have Super Floof keeping us company, but we have Ninja Floof over here bird watching. So let's look at the finished app really quick. When the app loads, it randomly pulls a recipe from the list of recipes in my SharePoint list. You could use whatever data source you like for this dataverse or whatnot. I'm using SharePoint for this use case. So we have our daily recipe at the bottom today. It's a Caesar salad. And here we're leveraging modern tabs to see the ingredients and the directions for it. Here we have all the different categories for the recipe types. And here we have a filter icon that when we click on it, brings out a flyout filter, hides the daily recipe, brings up all the recipes in the data source. And from here we can sort by main dishes. And then we could sort by either old to new or A to Z. And we have a combination here of a combo box from a data source. And then we have a manually created combo box. We'll cover all this in future videos today. Let's just look at the app. If you click on one of these subcategories, it brings you up the same sort of gallery and experience and we can click into it. We get the picture. We have a modern tabs again with the ingredients and the directions. Now let's get started with building the app from the ground up. Here we are in Canva, not a paid promotion. I'm just not creative. So I'm going to use some of the tools at my disposal. So if we look here and I search for something specific, this is what I used for my app so I know what to look for but you can come in here and you can poke around when you hover over these you'll notice at the bottom that some of them have a little pro if it doesn't have a pro you are free to use it however you like you don't have to pay for it so let's just click on this one customize this template like you did not have a paid subscription to it now the nice thing about Canva is when you select one of these templates you'll if you click on color here and I'm going to minimize that it's going to show you all the colors that are used within your design. If you click on one of the document colors up top, we get a little slider and that allows us to come in and get the hex. Now hex works in some places in Power Apps, but not all. So I'm going to copy that hex. I'm going to go out to Google and Google for hex to RGBA. Just grab the first one that comes up, paste the hex in there. And there we have the RGBA that we need for the app. Let's go back and look at my app. That's the actual card that I used. I have a pro subscription, so I'm able to use this one. Same sort of thing. Click on the color, come over here, grab the hex, convert it to RGBA. Now back in my app, we could use the app on start, but I'm starting to leverage formulas more for things like colors. And here we have the primary color. You can call these whatever you like. This is just the vernacular that I like to stick with because then I'm consistent across all my apps. So I have the primary color, the secondary color, third color, and then the background color. Now, if we click on the app itself, and I'm going to minimize this, we click on the filter icon. If we come out to, down here to filter, primary color, and it shows us what the color is. If we change that to secondary color, changes it to green. That's one of the nice things is 
We don't have to remember the hex or go find it. We can be consistent across our entire app with just setting a few little things. The other thing that I have here is in my media, I downloaded from Canva. If we come up here to share and download, you can select which file style you like, generally ping or JPEG or write. You could do transparent backgrounds if you like. And then we didn't want all pages, we would just want one page and download. And then you have the graphics, if we go back to my Power App and go to the ellipsis and go to media, here are all the graphics that I've used within my app. Let's start building out our home screen. This is our finished product. I'm gonna to go to new screen and select the header and footer template. This is a responsive design. We don't need the footer, so I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get turn off a lot of these drop shadows because we just don't need them and they will make things look a little cluttered and you'll see why here in a sec. I'm gonna turn off those three. I'm gonna to go to the main container and make the background color transparent. And then we're going to insert an image and we want it to fill the whole space. So let me scroll down, click on the image. Ah, I popped it into a, into a container. We don't want that, so we're gonna cut it. And I'm gonna go back to the main screen and paste it. There we go. So now we want it in a zero position X, a zero position Y. We want it to fill the screen. So parent.width and parent.height. And what is the image? We wanna name it first, IMG. You always wanna make sure you rename things so your coworkers don't hate you. Image BG, and what's the image gonna be? It's gonna be the app background. And IntelliSense is helping me. Now you see here we still have a couple containers that uh, have the drop shadow, so we need to get rid of that, but we need to send the image all the way to the back. So reorder, send to back. Now we can see here that these two containers need to be set up properly. So if we look at our main screen here, we have a header with some text, so I'm gonna copy that. And it's just text, so if I come in here and we wanna make the color, the background transparent, and actually, there we go, and now I'm just gonna paste that in there. Now it's, it's the dancing script, and if we scroll down, what's the color? The color is our primary color. We're getting there. Back to our main screen. We have the bottom container, we have another one, another container here, which is a horizontal container with these two categories, so I'm just gonna copy those, or these two, it's a label and an icon. So let's go create that in our new screen. So here we have the main container. So this is a vertical container. So everything I put in here is gonna be going up and down. We want these things to go side to side. So I'm gonna add another container. We're going to do a horizontal container and it doesn't look like we did anything, but we did. We need to turn flexible height off. That'll show us what we're looking for. So within there, I'll paste in my two items. Now we've got a little bit of an error here. That's just because I'm selecting a button that doesn't exist on this screen. We'll get into what this code means in a future video. Right now we're just doing the primary layout. We want this height to be 75. Actually, let's make it 50. And you see how there's still this background color. Let's click here, come down to the color, make it transparent. There we go. Now we have the icon and the category, recipe categories title. Now what we're gonna do next is add in our gallery for the categories. Now let's look at the data source for this gallery. It's just a blank gallery and I actually have a table set up here. So we are creating the variables for this gallery. I'm leveraging the card name of apps. The background image is from my images and that's the name of the image in my media. The title of it and which order I want it to come into. And so we have apps, salads, mains, desserts. If you wanna create this exact same app, I can put the code in the comments below. Let me know if you need it. And then within the gallery here, we have another container. And why we're doing the container is because I like to leverage the container's rounded borders. There's no real nice way of doing that consistently across all four borders easily without just a container container. Now within that container, what do we have? I have a title. I have a button on top of the title to give us this really nice rollover effect. So the end user, when they move their mouse over, they get the finger to indicate that that's something to click and we get the rollover effect. And then we have the image background from our table that we created for the, cal for the gallery. So let's go to our other screen and create this. I'm gonna copy all of this and go back to our other screen here. And because this 
container is already a vertical container, I don't have to do anything to lay out the gallery, right? I just create it and then I'm adding in here my code for the items. Now I don't want it to be a flexible height. If we look back here at the gallery, we have the flexible height off and we have a height of 50. So I'm going to go back here, I'm going to turn flexible height off, we'll set the height to 150. And now within the gallery, we'll go in and add a container. Now this is just a regular flexible container. It doesn't go vertical or horizontal, it does whatever you want. And we're going to have it fill the space that's given within the gallery. So I'm going to set the X to zero, the Y to zero, and the width instead of being parent.width, it's going to be parent, and I like to just hit tab there, and then change it to template width. And we want it to be a height of parent dot template height. So there's another way of doing it for you. Now the other thing that we need to do on this gallery is we don't want it going up and down this way. The wrap count is one, which means you only have one gallery item in the entire space given. We want it to be a wrap count of four. And now we are starting to get our containers. We want to give it a little bit more padding, so let's give it 20. Right now within the container, we want to add in the label the button and the image. So I'm going to come back and capture those, copy those, bring them back here, click the plus and hit paste. So let's look at what we have going on with the label, right? It is Lado black. We have an X value to center it. So we have parent dot width minus self dot width divided by two. We don't have to use template width because the label is within a container, not the gallery. And then the height is just 40, which gives us a good consistent look across everything. Now what's the text? The text is this item dot title because in our table, that's the title. Now if we look at the button, that's to give us that rollover effect and the little bit of gradient, right? We have the button set to, if we go to advanced, we're doing some stuff on, this, on the select, but here I'm going to type in fill. And what do we have doing on the fill, right? On the fill, I'm doing a bit of a gradient. So we're using an RGB with a 0.45. You can make this whatever you like. If I were to make this 0.75, you see how it gets lighter and lighter, but that makes the picture a little harder to see. Use whatever you like. The hover fill is the color fade, which means it's gonna fade whatever you put in there. And I'm using self.fill. And then for the pressed, we have self fill again. Now behind that, we have an image, and what is the image? It's going to be this item dot background image from our table. It has an X and Y of zero, and then the width is parent dot width, and the height is parent dot height. There we're starting to get the bones of our app. This is the end of episode one. Remember, if you become a Power Master member on my YouTube channel, you can download all the source files for this. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see anything in more detail on what we've covered so far. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts, questions, and any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to share this tutorial with your fellow Power Apps enthusiasts. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep rocking Power Apps like a true pro. See you in the next video.